He mentioned a windowless office. Malak must be using this space. Wait, you've been here before? A few days ago. 1931. He redecorated. Whoa. High tech. It must be his new base of operations. Hydra won't be needing this, will they? It's a good thing about computers in 1973. No firewalls. I have no idea what that means. What are you looking for? It's a list of targets for insight. It's mostly shield assets. Wait, Bruce Banner. Never heard of him. That's because he's just a kid now, but in a few decades he becomes an Avenger. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. So they'll do a bad thing, pick him off while he's still young. Exactly. None of you could survive. How do we know you will? We don't. But the radiation's mostly gamma. It's like, uh, I was made for this. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie, this is going to be my new Avengers Easter Egg video. There was a whole bunch of Hulk Easter Eggs for Incredible Hulk, Captain America Winter Soldier, and just general Avengers stuff going on during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recently. So we'll break it all down, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, we'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Hulk moment on the video. So we'll just number these as we go along just to stay organized. But the big deal here is, is what's going on in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. during Season 7, the final season, is that they're jumping through the timeline like they did during Avengers Endgame, but they're going through different decades in each episode. So in this episode where they were doing all this incredible Hulk stuff, they were in the 70s. So most of the episode itself was meant to be a parody of the actual original Incredible Hulk TV series in addition to doing a bunch of modern day MCU Incredible Hulk Bruce Banner stuff. They even did a parody of the intro titles from the Incredible Hulk TV series and they played the theme music during the episode too. ...for a way to tap into the hidden strengths that all humans have. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you're a really big Hulk fan, the cool thing that Mark Ruffalo is actually working on behind the scenes is he's trying to get them to do a new Incredible Hulk series with his version of the Hulk. No idea when that would happen, but he's just said that he's pitching it to be sort of a revival of the original Incredible Hulk TV series with a similar plot. Him on the run, Thunderbolt Ross, Red Hulk, the Thunderbolts chasing him down episode to episode. But elsewhere in the Marvel Universe, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this season is kind of doing the same thing that the Loki TV series is going to be doing, the Loki from Avengers Endgame that escaped with a Tesseract. The plot of that series is remarkably similar to what's going to be happening during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7 with them jumping around, altering major events in MCU history. The big difference between what's going on on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Loki TV series is that Loki is associated with the Time Variance Authority. They're kind of like the Time Cops of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Time Lords if you want to make a Doctor Who reference because there's a lot of Doctor Who stuff going into the series. The big difference with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is that the villains are the Chronomicons, it's the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who are acting like the Time Cops, trying to stop them from altering major events in MCU history. So during this big Incredible Hulk episode, they're basically trying to jumpstart Project Insight from Captain America Winter Soldier. Remember when they were targeting people that were going to be special or special people themselves? There was a giant list of people that they flash on screen. Bruce Banner just happened to be one of the biggest Avengers on that list. There were a bunch of other references too. Like one of the other people on their hit list that they had targeted with Project Insight during the episode was Nick Fury, who at this time, as of the events of the episode in the 70s, was still in his 20s on active military duty. They referenced Peggy Carter as a target who was still active in S.H.I.E.L.D. at this time. You have to picture this alternate reality with a version of Steve Rogers just hiding on the DL, Captain America, growing old with her slowly, just trying to stay out of the public limelight. The Russos did tease that at some point they might tell that story of Captain America returning the Infinity Stones and then going back to live with Peggy Carter. 
there's just a really big time jump between him leaving the platform here with all the infinity stones going back to the different time periods that they stole them from, but also taking back Thor's hammer back to the events of Thor of the Dark World. For those of you that wonder what happened to that extra Thor's hammer, Chris Evans teased that he doesn't want to come back right away, but it's implied that he'll come back to do the voiceover role for his Marvel What If Captain America First Avenger episode, because Haley Atwell revealed that Peggy Carter herself isn't going to show up during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7. They have Sousa from the Agent Carter series, so if you don't remember that big Captain America Easter egg, and now he's a member of the team jumping around through time trying to stop the other Chronomicons, the evil people that are altering the time stream. One of the other targets was Jim Morita, who was a Howling Commando from Captain America's squad and First Avenger. He's also the grandfather of Spider-Man's principal at Midtown High here. You can actually see his picture up on the shelf here. There are a couple other big Easter eggs here that you probably recognize, like Victoria Hand was a character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. earlier. Conrad Murphy is a Secret Warriors Easter egg. That was a version of an Inhumans team that they did with Daisy in an earlier season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Miss Marvel herself will be the next really big MCU Inhuman to show up, but they haven't quite explained the logic behind Inhumans in the MCU yet. Even though we did have that Inhumans TV series, I think they're just going to pretend like that never happened. So when they do introduce Inhumans in the MCU, it'll be in a completely different way and it'll probably have something to do with the way they ended things in Avengers Endgame. All the snaps, all the cosmic energy, just use your imagination. It's free to theorycraft right now. That series doesn't sound like it's going to premiere till 2022, so it's still a long ways off. Michael Phillips here is also a Punisher Easter egg. I know a lot of you are wondering what's happening with Punisher in the MCU. Is John Bernthal going to come back and be the Punisher in an MCU project or a Disney Plus project like Moon Knight or something a little bit darker? As far as I know, right now, Marvel doesn't have any big plans for the Punisher character, but he will come back eventually. He will show up in the MCU in some new project. There's also a big Infinity Gauntlet reference during the episode, too. Something I cooked up that I call the gauntlet. So the big thing here is they're just jumping through different decades doing big Marvel Easter eggs. There's only going to be a couple more episodes this season, and that's basically it. But there are rumors of them doing an Agents of Sword TV series as a sort of successor to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or a spiritual successor. It'd be a little bit different behind the scenes because it'd be a Disney Plus series and it'd be set on Nick Fury's space station, the S.W.O.R.D. space station from the comics. Because the whole thing with the MCU now is that they're sort of transitioning away from big Earth-based stories for the most part in terms of big Avengers level stuff. And they're moving all that stuff into outer space for more cosmic stories. So this just kind of implies where the big villains are going to be coming from during Marvel Phase 4 and Marvel Phase 5. The first time we'll really see that is going to be during the Marvel Eternals movie with the Celestial Host. We'll see them come to planet Earth, create the Eternals, and then we'll get a bunch of big cosmic MCU backstory. They did a little bit of that during the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. James Gunn actually revealed the history of that, like how this scene came to be. Why this wound up in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and not in some other movie. He said it was all in service of setting up the Infinity Saga payoffs during Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So they needed to do Thanos full on in the movie finally. So they just worked in some Thanos scenes and kind of reimagined him, cast Josh Brolin to become their Thanos in the MCU. Then he said that Kevin Feige requested that he actually do a brief history of the Marvel Universe in the Infinity Stones. Explain the Infinity Stones. So that's why the Collector has this big scene explaining the Infinity Stones to the Guardians of the Galaxy in the origin of the universe. So even though S.H.I.E.L.D. is still going to exist in Marvel Phase 4, for the most part, the MCU stories, especially the Disney Plus stuff, is transitioning to S.W.O.R.D. stories. We're going to see them introduced for the first time during the WandaVision series, Remember Darcy from the Thor movies? She's actually coming back during WandaVision 2. We don't know exactly what she'll be doing, but she'll also be one of those agents of S.W.O.R.D. I'm also assuming that Jane Foster is probably working with S.W.O.R.D. too at some point. Tom Holland was posting a bunch of stuff recently. They've just started filming, so I'll do a new Spider-Man and Uncharted movie video sometime later today or tomorrow. So look out for that. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see that video when I post it. While you wait for everything, click here for my new Venom 2 Spider-Man video and click here for my new Doctor Strange 2 MCU Ghost Rider video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.